it'll start recording. Okay, great. Thank you, Susan. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Home Decorators Club first Zoom call. I am so excited to be here with you today and to welcome you onto the call. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and all the things you have going on and making this a priority and actually making you and your home a priority. And so uh, I see we have some people on the call and throughout uh, this uh, hour that we will spend together, if you have questions or you want to chime in, um, you can either raise your hand or which is, you know, wave at me so I can see you and, and welcome you to unmute or you can unmute and just say, excuse me. <laughs> and then you can ask your question or answer uh, the questions that I'm going to be giving. Um, today we're talking about cozying up the home because as you know, the last uh, four months we've been uh, in this um, COVID uh, pandemic and we've had a lot of time at home, haven't we? We've had a lot of time to look at our homes and be in our homes and discover things we love about our homes and probably a few things we don't like about our homes. And uh, so my goal today is to hopefully enlighten you uh, about things that you can change up in your home, things that will make it more cozy, more comfortable, more peaceful for you and to inspire you to take into your own hands some decorating challenges uh, for you. And so uh, I'm glad that you came to the call and uh, let's get started. So here we have, um, here on my first slide, a home that you know I think is very cozy. I know the homeowners have told me that they love it and that they find it very cozy. They are a dual working couple that are very professional and they chose a very monochromatic tone because for them that provides a peace and a calm. And so uh, really it was making sure that things were very cohesive looking because they're very um, tidy and uh, have very little, um, I guess, you know, there's no piles, <laughs> there's no extra accessories. They're just very tightened up in what they like to display at home. And so I use this kind of to show you that this is one interpretation of cozy. And, and this family has used the word cozy several times when they talk about their house. Um, so you'll see also that like all the window coverings look very much the same. Uh, the carpets or rugs, you know, that are there, uh, they're very, very similar. They're the same in color, just a little bit different pattern. The furniture is all very similar and cohesive. Um, we've added flowers to kind of warm it up a little bit. Uh, there's actually more artwork on this wall <laughs> that you can't see, um, which adds to it. We've added pillows and things. And so um, I just kind of wanted to kick off the call with an example of cozy. So why don't you tell me, actually, let's go back one. Why don't you tell me what you feel is cozy in your house? And so we'll start with you, Lori. You want to unmute and tell me what you think is cozy in your house? I'd have to say, I love my house. I think it's very cozy, but I'd have to say my bedrooms because I love linens. I love making the bed. I don't care if it looks as beautiful as it does someone looking at it and saying, I want to take a nappy in that bed. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. How about you, Janice? Is there a thought that you have about cozy? Can you find the unmute button? It's at the top. I did. I'm sorry. Um, well, I really want to move because I don't find too much cozy in my house. It's really a small house. I want to get a little bigger place, but I like my living room because it has a L-shaped couch. And I really like the fact that we can sit here and have a good conversation or watch TV and stuff. Very good. That's great. Conversation areas are very important for adding cozy. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. So Sharon, do you have a thought on cozy? I'm just going down the line how it is on my screen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, good. It, my, I, a couple of years ago, I downsized quite a bit. I have just a little under 1,200 square feet, two bedrooms, two baths. So my house is pretty cozy in every room just because of the size of it. And, and my bedroom 
bedroom is one and my great room kitchen combination it remains cozy too i just i like the whole thing that's great All cozy. well done may i say well done that's great thank you how about you eva can you unmute and tell us a little bit about what you find cozy about your space are you there eva Let's, Eva, we'll let you get a, a moment to find your um, unmute button, which is up in the upper right hand corner. And we'll go on down to Sandra. Sandra, welcome to the call. What do you think is uh, fun about your house and what makes you feel cozy? Is it possible to unmute for them, Susan? If they're having trouble unmuting? I just muted, I muted myself. So uh, Janelle, you can act, do you see that control? Do you have the ability to um, unmute or not? It says hide video. I'm or... gonna make you the host. Okay. So I think that may give you that ability. Let me know if it does not, and I can unmute as you call on people. I can. Um, Eva, are you there? Okay, we'll try Sandra. Sandra? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Can you uh, tell us about Cozy at your place? Well, I like art, so I have a lot of art everywhere, and I don't seem to be able to stop myself. <laughs> if there's a blank wall, I'm going to find a piece of art to put on it. That's great and beautiful, but I, too. But I like my sunroom. My sunroom is a little bit of a Hawaiian theme. My mm -hmm. husband and I spent many years going back and forth to Hawaii, and we loved all the islands. And so I, I tried to bring a little bit of that into that room. That's and, right. and it faces the yard, which is a lot of trees and flowers and that sort of thing. Sounds lovely. That's great. Thank you. Um, hi, Margaret. Welcome to the call. I'm going to uh, unmute hi. you. Good, good, good. You got it. You know what? I'm working, so I don't mean to be rude, but I'm trying to uh, do both. OK, <laughs> so. no problem. I'm um, moving, so because so nothing's cozy right now. <laughs> I, I'm trying to change decor, which is confusing. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that today, and hopefully okay. you'll be able to walk away with some help. Sounds good. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Okay, Christine, welcome to the call. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Can you hear me? I can now. Oh, good. Uh, you haven't seen me in a while because I relocated to Henderson, Nevada. Oh, so, great. So I'm really excited about this because I can participate in the group again. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I hope people will come on and join this because it does seem like it could work well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm looking, can you see me? Because when I'm looking at my, I can't, it is, am, am I just a black square? You are black square today, right now, but if you go down to the bottom, to the left, there is a camera that has an X through it. And if you click on that, that should bring your screen up. I'm, I'm seeing the movement. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> um, so as far as cozy, I am a, I'm an avid collector. <laughs> uh -huh. Collections are all over my house. I'm not happy if I'm not surrounded with them or by them. So, um, Unlike your clients, I have probably little piles everywhere. I, I'm I'm more in your in your boat, so <laughs> we will talk about that because I think that's an important part of a coziness is to be able to express yourself through things that you've collected over time. So we'll definitely talk about that. Good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Janelle Tannehill and I'm with Impressions Redesign and I'm a designer uh, here in the area and I like to help busy homeowners uh, to make their home feel more like their home. And so a lot of that has to do with uh, redesigning their space using the things that they already have and uh, curating new things that will help them to uh, be able to enjoy their space more. And so here on the screen, you'll see just two examples of uh, redesigns. 
Uh, one is just moving in to the right. And how many sees that, you know, when people move you in, they just kind of lay it down, don't they? <laughs> you know, there's no, it's kind of willy nilly. And so really all they needed was somebody to come in and give it purpose and cozy up the room and make a conversation area and hang those drapes and, you know, put the rug in the right place. And so uh, super simple, right? But important. Um, to the left was a young couple and uh, she wanted to express herself because when she, her, she felt her room looked like her grandma's room. It just didn't have any um, pizzazz or make her feel, um, she just wasn't expressing herself. And so we went with a really dark paint and even as a designer at first, I was like, whoa, that's a really dark color. Will that look good? And I had to, I, I mean, I had to actually come back and do the paint color twice because I was worried about it but it looks amazing and she loves it. She loves the drama of this beautiful green. Um, do, uh, you might notice we used the, the dresser is still there. It went from the wall with the window on the left to the wall on the right. You'll see the same bed covering. We didn't go and spend a lot of money on uh, new bedding and stuff. Really, this is a really good example of paint and a few accessories and a couple of uh, side tables. And so even that bench she had, uh, in her sun porch. So I just think you can make some really good changes by using and repurposing what you already have. And so uh, those are just a couple of examples of what I do as a designer. So as we jump into this, I think it's really important to have you know that cozy means different things to different people. And so that's why I was kind of asking you, what does cozy feel like to you in your home? Uh, this couple, um, now I did not do design these rooms. These are from a fellow designer um, who is actually on HGTV, uh, but I love his work because he interviews his clients much like I do and gets their feel and read and just really changes things up in a way that they just are thrilled. So if you look at the house on the left, there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, it, the walls are painted a color and they've got a carpet and you can see they have a little entertainment center there on the left. And I mean, it's not horrible, but if you look on the right, the right is really their personality. And so this is their, what they call, this is what they described it as their cozy home because it's a very small home, but they added um, the drapes and a, a you know beautiful rug and some different accessories that really uh, tell the story of the couple that they are. And so they, when they look at these two pictures, when they do the reveal, which is really good, and if you want to link to this because it was kind of it was a cool show, uh, they were so excited because they go, "This is really our home. This is who we are," and they just felt like they really identified with it. And they were so excited, and that's how I want you to feel when you walk in your door. I want you to walk in and look at your house and go, this is it, this really tells my story. This is who I am. This is my comfort place. This is where I love to come home to. And so um, think about that as we're going through these slides. Will this help me achieve that comfort, cozy feeling? And will this help me achieve a home that I really want to come home to? So, so, here we go. Now, this is another more monochromatic, but having a home that is inviting is so important because we have guests coming by, we have family coming by. I mean, look today, we're having our office come into our home through Zoom, right? We're, we're spending more time at home than we've ever spent before. And so we want to look at our home and see, is this really the inviting home that I desire and how can I maybe switch things up to make it even more cozy and inviting and so if you look at this room on the right you'll see that they're very minimalistic they are very um, you know neutral and this is what they find is to be very cozy the way I found a lot of these pictures was actually by using the word cozy peaceful um, those kinds of keywords you know those kinds of words in my search because that's really how people are describing their own homes. So when we look at cozying up our home, we're gonna also look at um, how, the things we're gonna consider are how we use the rooms in our home. And today we're using them more unusually than ever. You can probably see behind me that I'm in the library. Um, my husband's home now, uh, I mean, home back and forth from work to home, but he's using the office as his office. 
and he's got to be in there with his work out on a table and he's got a lot of, um, I guess, priority in that space. And so I'm now in the library working from home, um, utilizing this as my office space. Um, how many homes do I go into where they have this dining room in the front and they never utilize it? And so we reinvent the dining room and it becomes a playroom or an office or a yoga studio or sometimes it's a, um, uh, a wine uh, room, you know, like a wine bar room, um, a game room. And so that they get a lot more use out of what used to be the traditional dining room. Um, you also want to think about because we're doing a lot more Zoom calls, is what is behind you on the wall? What are you representing yourself as on your Zoom call? I mean, is it, um, I, I was on a call and I, could, I couldn't even look. I had to look away. She, I'm sure, had no idea that people could see back there. She had dirty dishes. It was like the sink was full and there was like a, um, what do you call it? Um, a serving picture, pitcher and there was some plates sitting up and then on the counter, there was a lot of dishes. To, I mean, she was behind. I, I, I wanted to go help her. I felt kind of bad. Um, and then I've seen where the kids are walking around in the back without a shirt on, or they've got, you've got, um, you know, just, just the very cluttered, a lot going on office. And so it's nice to um, take a look at the room that you're going to be Zoom calling in, or the room that people are coming and receiving, you know, bringing your work from the office, or the room that people are going to be seeing you in and, and kind of see how you can cozy that up and make it just look a, to reflect a little bit more your style, if that makes sense. And then um, with multiple workspace, I mean, I know the grandkids have been here doing homework, so I have to have space for them for that. Um, they're right now, um, one of my grandsons is in my husband's office and he's doing Dungeons and Dragons uh, gaming with his friend. So we're having to kind of carve out different parts of the house. And so be thinking flexibility in your furnishings um, and how you're using your space. And then um, also color. A lot of people have been very stressed over the last few months because they're home. And, you know, that red kitchen that was so popular 10 years ago, I'm getting calls and people are saying, we need to get rid of the red kitchen. I've been home. It's driving me crazy. It's too bright. Um, or we've had white walls. I feel like I, I live in a prison because our walls are all white. I need some color. So I'm getting kind of calls from people that are willing and want to make a change right now because of the environment and having spent so much time in their environment right now. Wouldn't you agree? A lot of time at home. And so let's, let's go, let's jump back. The front entry is very important in our home because it is the first thing people see when they come into a room and it can be bright. By the way, this is that same home from the HGTV show. Um, this is their front entrance uh, to the home. What we saw earlier was an entrance, like a side entrance to their family room. But I thought this was amazing because it really, I can tell a little bit about the people who live here and I've never met them. You know what I mean? It's just like, you can tell that they're vibrant, that they're probably outgoing, that these colors are really depicting their personality. Um, notice the live plants, you know, they're just beautiful. The large uh, geomet geometric on the carp, the rug there, you know, beautiful really tells the story down to the little pots that are on that table and that uh, very original artwork that's on the wall. And so this is really showing you without having never met these people or even seen them, it kind of tells the story about them, doesn't it? So use of color is really important when we're looking at um, a home that feels cozy and a home that we love to be in. Um, some people can take a lot of use of color. I mean, they want color. They want it just like the picture we just saw in the last um, slide or this slide here on the left. They use that beautiful turquoise color to um, bring in that energy into the room, right? Over here on the right, this designer is more traditional, more like you, Sandra and Lori, very traditional. And so she is bringing color 
and she actually changes in a little while we're going to see another one of her bedrooms but she changes the color with the season or periodically and so this might be red as her pop-up color right now but she'll be changing it trust me in a few months or six months and it'll be maybe uh, apple green will be her color she'll take out the large picture over the bed the throw the lamp and that pillow and she'll change it up with a new color. And uh, that is one thing that I've noticed about Lori, you on the call, um, that you do very well is changing up bedrooms and, and any room in your house and adding different colors. And it's so much fun. It's almost like a hobby when you can start feeling so comfortable that you buy accessories and, and pictures and you can just move them around the house um, as you want to change things up. And so uh, adding just a pop of color sometimes can just be a, fresh, a breath of fresh air and something fun to do. So let me check in with you guys. What color would you like to add as an accent or have you recently added as an accent in your home? So let's go down the line and just hear from you. Kind of think about your house right now. And Is there a color that you've been bringing in that you've kind of gained a new interest in or you know, a lot of times we'll buy something and we love the color so we'll buy a few more pieces in that color. And so, uh, Sharon, let's go to you first. I'm going to unmute you. You there? I'm trying to unmute you. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. I did. And, and when I unmute myself, I'm, it's on the bottom left hand of my screen. The okay. The mute button is. Um, when I lived in Rosedale, I, my house was gray, black, and white bases. So I could put any color in the world I want to in it. My living room, uh, just a short time ago, was uh, red was my accent color. But now it's orange. I even have orange shears on my window. And that's a cheap way, inexpensive way, to add color. And I do the same in my bedroom. I change bedspreads because that, too, is an inexpensive way. If, if you plan it that way. So, and I like bright colors uh, and with my wall color, I can do it. That's great. Sounds fantastic. Thank you. Christine, You're have welcome. you found? Um, actually, uh, we bought this home um, a year ago um, in November and um, I was inspired by actually you. Um, we painted the kitchen cabinets and we went with I was also really excited because shortly after we did it um, Sherwin Williams named their color of the year uh, the navel and I love so that color we yeah so we did uh, navel and then um, on our, our lower cabinets and we did a, a, a creamy off white on the upper cabinets and then we have an island that we did in the navel as well it turned out really good, but I remember one of your meetings, you talked about working with a client and you painted cabinets, so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and so, the, uh, it, but my point is that the navel is, uh, navel and shades of blue are my, my accent color. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Margaret, are you available to share or is this not a good time? It's a good time. Can I ask a couple questions that you- Sure. So you mentioned in one of those um, about the plants, are silks out? Um, natural, real plants are very in right now. If the silk looks very real, I mean like you can't tell that it's not real, it's okay. It's a but tree, I've got several trees from prior. Do I get rid of them? Well, are they extremely real that people would think that they were real? No, <laughs> or... that answered it. Okay, that's the only way, yeah, right and now. The other question real. is on um, flower arrangements. Like, are those gone now, too? We're not seeing more than one in any visual space. So if you have an open concept, that would be one in the kitchen nook family room. Do you know what I'm saying? Or one yeah. in the entry if it's alone, you know, that's, but we're not seeing more than one. And it would be, again, one that looks very real. 
Very real. Okay. It's kind of gone out of style is um, the ones that are, that don't look as real. Yeah. Like so. blue flowers. Yes. Okay. Got it. Flowers that you won't find in nature. <laughs> Great answer. So. And, and one more question. Linda sure. mentioned that she changes colors in her, I think she said in her bedroom, what, like orange was one and I love that idea. What's her headboard color or the other corresponding colors she has in her room that allows her to change her colors so easily? I'm gonna give that to you, Sharon, that looks like Linda. <laughs> yeah, okay, my name really is Sharon Donaldson. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. My daughter, it's okay. No, that's fine, it says Linda Williams. That's my daughter who set me up. And I will tell her, hey, set me up to be me. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, can, I have a, I can show you how to do that real easy too. So we can we can show how smart you are. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Look at that. At the end of the call. I love that. Okay. Um, my headboard is black uh, slats. And so the wall shows through it. Uh, it's it's like a Scandian, Scandinavian type bed. Uh, you oh, know, so simple I'm, lines. I'm very extremely contemporary. Mm -hmm. My whole mm -hmm. house is straight lines. <laughs> awesome. And, I love that. And, it, well, and so I can put any color in there I want to. And the one, and I have, you know, an adjoining, adjoining bathroom, and I have, make the towels go with it too. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. And You're my, welcome. my color that I'm trying to keep. And I'm moving into a home of black and um, white and gray. Uh, is I'm trying to keep purple. I love aubergine eggplant. Oh, I think that's possible. It definitely. Oh, tell me how. I want to know how. Oh, I will. Let's okay. let some of the other people talk, and we'll come back to that. Does that sound good? Yeah. Thank you, Sandra. I'm going to try and unmute you. Or do you want to unmute? Are you there? Do you want to unmute yourself? For some reason, I'm having trouble unmuting. You know, an easy way is just to press the space bar when they want to talk and then let up when they don't want to oh. talk. Okay. Does anyone want to, uh, Sandra, do you want to press, press your space bar and talk? Poor thing. Are you trying it? Pressing your space bar to talk, Sandra. Okay, let's go down just a little bit and come back to her. Uh, Janice, do you want to unmute? Because I want to hear. Yeah, I'm the same as Sharon. I like to change out my colors um, for the season. So I also change my bathroom towels and my bedroom uh, sheets and everything and even my kitchen towels for the season. So my color right now is um, greens and violets oh, for summertime. Pretty. pretty. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. How about you, uh, Lori? I'd have to say I've never been a blue person. I, I've just never really liked it, but everywhere you go, you see blue. And during the time of this sequestering, my husband and I went to, uh, a big blue buffalo check curtain in the in our living room family room our living room dining room scenario so yeah blue is the color that i introduced that i never thought i would that's great and that is a popular color right now for sure did you introduce navy maury yes uh-huh okay love it um eva would you like to uh, enter into the conversation and unmute yourself unmute yourself or press your space bar and you can talk. Hi everyone. Um, Hi. Welcome. <laughs> so glad you're here. Yeah, I'm, I'm new to all this. I began to be, I, my interest in home decoration started when I became a real estate agent because oh. I could tell the difference it made to the homes that I visited or viewed and how much it cost. So that's one area that I'm interested in. I, I am new to home decoration, so 
I'm ready to incorporate some of your ideas and um, looking forward to learn more about this as we go along. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, good. Well, did I miss anybody um, who would like to speak? You're welcome to press your space bar and let us know what color interests you or what you're thinking about. Can you hear me now? Yes. What I want to say is we, Janelle and I went to Pier 1 and picked out some pillows for my sofa. My sofa is very neutral. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought to pick out these great big pink furry <laughs> pillows, pink no less. So I have two big pillows on my sofa, which feel really good. And then with that, I went to Crate and Barrel and I bought a pretty mint green decorative throw. And the two colors go very nicely together. Sounds so lovely. That was the new purchase. And she has a, for those of you that haven't been to Sandra's house, she has a camel, beautiful camel sofa. And uh, the pink and the camel look really nice together. It was a very big surprise. I mean, it was like a good aha. So thank you, Sandra. Okay, the next slide that we're gonna talk about is um, to add cozy to a room is we wanna cozy it up with the seating. So many times um, when I enter a home uh, for a consultation, they'll have the couch over here and then way on the other side of the room, we'll see the chairs and then way over here will be uh, the TV. And they have all the furniture kind of back against the wall and they're really, the chair and the couch are really too far away to have a conversation because you'd be shouting or they, they have extra seating and you'd be twisting a lot to try to get over here to see them. And so I'm always looking at ways that we can arrange furniture in a way that is so comfortable for seating arrangements. And so when I look at this room as an example, you have wonderful seating here in this sectional piece, which I'm sorry, it did get a little bit cut off. But the sectional is a great place for you to cozy up and have a conversation, a cup of tea, a morning chat with your husband or your kids. And then over across the room is actually a separate seating area. If you wanted to have it be a part, say you're having a party and you're inviting, you know, two or three couples over, you would bring those chairs and slide them closer to where the um, seating arrangement is. And then you might bring a couple of smaller wood folding chairs or something into the room or a couple of stools into the room uh, so that everyone could, you know, have some seating. The reason that those chairs are over by the window is it's also wonderful in a room to be able to have a conversation area and then a second conversation area where people can go over and be on their iPad maybe, or they could uh, have a phone call or read a book, but they don't have to, they can still be in the room and feel like they're a part of the family and the life that's going on but you have a separate area across the room for them. And so many rooms, especially if they're larger rooms, that's really important. And so uh, another thing is want to be sure that the couch is not interfering with the entry into the room. And not only is it bad feng shui, um, which we've had a couple of our home decorator club classes have been on feng shui, but it's not only that it's that, but also it's just confusing to the person entering the room. It's like they enter the room and they don't know where to go. They don't know, do I go over to the left? Do I go to the right? Am I even supposed to be coming in this room? Because it's almost like a brick wall in, you know, in their feeling um, as they enter the room. So you want to be sure that if you have a sofa that has an ottoman or something, then um, you would want to uh, have the ottoman part where you enter the room so you don't have the sofa back that kind of blocks the wall. That makes sense. So another thing we're going to talk about that we talked about earlier are plants. Plants are very um, popular right now. Um, it's very 70s for those of us who can remember the 70s where you have the trailing hanging plant in the corner or you could have uh, a plant arrangement in a low, uh, a low, like almost bonsai dish, or they have the tree in the corner. And, and here you kind of see all of that, but uh, that is very popular and it gives you a sense of cozy and it's really freshening up a room is what it's all about. And so, as I said earlier, 
um, if you don't have a green thumb and not everybody does, I totally get that. You can hire a service to come into your home and they will take care of your plants if you really want to get into the plant scene or you can have extremely good faux plants. But right now, like my fun floral arrangements, I'm kind of putting them off um, if they don't look uh, natural because that's just the trend right now. Now I don't think, I'm not saying throw away all your flower arrangements because trends come and trends go, as you know, but I'm just saying to freshen up a room, um, especially uh, even real estate staging, you wanna be sure that um, you're using just the top quality foes right now, so. Another thing to make your house feel cozy is vignettes. And a vignette, for those of you that don't know, though we have had a couple of Home Decorator Club um, events around them, is uh, putting a, a little, um, like a tray or putting a, a grouping on a coffee table or a sofa table behind the sofa or end tables but it's putting a grouping of things of interest uh, together uh, for people to, you know, aesthetically pleasing, to look aesthetically pleasing. And so here you see a couple of, um, I would say, traditional to farm vignettes. And these vignettes are showing, this one is in a packing box here on the right and on the left. This is actually a vignette on the table that has like that little kind of beehive woven basket and some natural plants and twigs. And it's just kind of showing you different ways that you can do vignettes. And actually this year, I would like to do a whole um, presentation on vignettes because they're so much fun and there's so many ways you can do it. And we have so many tricks on how to do great vignettes. But it's a good way for you to show your personality because you could use things that are very personal to you and the personality of your home. So if your home is more uh, French or country or modern, your vignette will be in that same vein. And so uh, we'll give you some hints on how to do that. But a vignette is always a good way to personalize your home. Being cozy a lot of times means soft, and soft it, you can do in textiles. And so it's these uh, wonderful little pillows, or it's rugs that you put on the floor, or a throw to kind of make things seem a little softer. Uh, what I'm seeing now too is two rugs on the floor. So if you have a neutral rug, and you wanna add a little splash of color, you can go and find a smaller, because as you know, the larger the rug gets, the more expensive it is. You can do a smaller rug and you can actually layer them one on top of the other. And so we see that a lot in design right now. Um, and the, uh, the cheaper rug or the rug that um, is more neutral is usually the one that is on the bottom. So, and we'll just do that layering with pillows as well, you can get a very expensive, very nice pillow, and then add some Ikea pillows, the velvet Ikea, or you can add some Pier One pillows to it that are more neutral and more reasonably priced. You don't have to have all really expensive pillows to make a couch look uh, rich and inviting. So, Straight lines are something that can be kind of harsh and can prevent places from looking cozy. Um, even in that first uh, picture that I showed you, they had a dining table that was a rectangle, their couch was a rectangle, their rug was a rectangle, they, you know, there were so many rectangles and squares that, that we had to switch out and do a round uh, table and chairs in the dining room because it was just, um, it felt too sterile or too harsh. And so um, a lot of times we, we add pillows or draperies to soften things up in this uh, beautiful room here. Um, we see that there could be some hard lines with the coffee table um, and the ottoman down below it, uh, but that throw, believe it or not, kind of just adds just a little bit of coziness to it. Um, I love that they still have their leather chairs there that they probably sit in and enjoy, but they made them work by adding the brown in the ottoman it itself with that little pattern in the fabric. And so the, you know, the drapes look very cozy and add a nice pop of color. The pillows, you know, notice how they're not super squared off. They actually have, they look like they have feather in them and they can be 
soft and squeezable. Um, all of that adds to that uh, cozy look and really gets your eye away from the harsh lines. So a lot of times if I have a lot of linear furniture, I will do a round table, round coffee table, round end tables. They have a round end table in this one um, to try to kind of break it up a little bit. And this is actually uh, speaking to the idea of having an antique or something that you have collected in the room. And I think every room needs something very personal and collected to make it uniquely your own. When I, I also stage homes, and so I go in and um, when I'm staging a home, I'm taking out all the personal effects so that when people come in and see the home, they can imagine themselves there. And so a lot of the personal pictures will come down, all of the personal pictures, but uh, all of the personal belongings will get packed and sent away. And then we will have just a table, a chair, or this. But in my staging, I like to still make it look a little bit personal, so I will leave a few um, nondescript or non-offensive um, accessories out so that uh, there does look a little bit, um, I guess, more personal. So sometimes I'll put a throw on the end of the couch and I'll put a book closed on the throw like you just got up from reading a book, you know, just to make it just seem a little bit more personal. But that those personal things are, are important in our decorating because they really describe who we are. So now I would like to ask everyone what collections that you have that are personal that you display in your home. And we're gonna go kind of fast because we're thinking about the hour time. So let's start with um, Margaret. You happen to be at the top of my list right now. Do you wanna tell me what you have that's personal in your home? No, I'm not much of a collector. Okay. So I would say some of the things I have that I have my mother-in-law's dishes that I love, but they're okay. usually hidden. You know, I put them away for safekeeping. Oh, okay. Well, Christine, would you, you can probably take her on a little treasure hunt to find a few things, right? Yeah, definitely. Because um, Christine and I both like that kind of stuff, so. Oh, that's, um, so I'm, I'm crazy about birds. Uh, birds. Real ones, I, I have pet birds and bird watching, but I have little birds all throughout my house. That's fabulous. I love it. So Sharon, what do you think? What, what do you kind of collect? I don't have room to collect much, but mm -hmm. I do have in my great room three floating shelves that are black. And recently I took, I had, when I lived in Sun City, I had a collection of baby seals. They're all white, but I put them on risers, if you will, that are wood and okay. just, put those on one of the shelves and it was just, it's really neat. I was surprised and I Perfect. have so many of them, I didn't want to get rid of them. So that's Perfect. what it is. Thank you. Sandra, what do you collect? I know you collect art because you have beautiful artwork at your house. Anything else you want to share that you collect? If you press the space bar, I think you can talk. Hand-blown glass. I used to be a manufacturer's rep and I represented many uh, glassware lines from uh, and I collected a lot then, still have it, whatever I haven't given over to given away. <laughs> Perfect. Lori, what do you collect? No, I can guess. What? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say dishes, antique dishes, depression glass, things of that mm -hmm. nature. I like to switch my dining room table. It's always set in some form of new dishes. New dishes. Great. Let's see who is that. Janice? What do you collect? I collect wee forest folks. They're little teeny mice and they fit in a nice little cabinet and stuff. So I have over a hundred of them. And I also have a doll collection from when I was a kid and my mother started for me. Oh, nice. Ava, do you have a collection you'd like to share? If you press this, press down the, the bar there, the space bar, I think you could just talk. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving. If you, if you decide to talk later, you can. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this room. 
And what of the trends and of the things we've been talking about, what do we see here? But of course, greenery, fresh greenery that is real, right? Um, beautiful artwork, a beautiful rug. Um, things aren't so tightened up, you know, that they really live in this room. They have a little bit of an eclectic taste. You see a little bit of modern, um, but they have some traditional in here too. Um, I like that they, you know, just, I feel like they've curated this space to be their own and it looks cozy to me. And again, when I did the search for words for pictures, this was definitely one that said cozy. So, so that's, let's keep moving. So, so selecting your fabrics and soft furnishings for cozy is important. So people um, that have a lot of wood like on their, um, on their couch, on their sofa, a lot of times you'll see a lot of pillows to kind of counteract or counterbalance the, the harshness of the wood and the softness of the pillows. Um, here you see in this home, which is again uh, monochromatic, you'll see the throw that's folded up over on the right and the pillows on the sofa. Um, they, that, there's a little another little throw on the arm. Um, there's some window coverings uh, in the back room. This is all kind of showing you that they had to soften things up because it might be feeling too harsh in the fact that it's so monochromatic and you see a lot of wood lines and wood with the doors and you know you need to soften all that up with some uh, fabric to make it look more cozy and inviting. If we look across the room though, the fireplace is definitely a cozy and inviting feature in any room. It just, it just speaks to cozy. And even when it's not on, if you have candles in there or um, if you just have beautiful birch logs or whatever you have in your fireplace, it's still, even when it's not on, gives you a sense of cozy. And smell actually is very important. Um, smell, the smell of your home really tells a little bit of your story. And so it's important that, I don't know how, how many of you with kind of a show of hand, how many of you have a signature smell in your home? Like something you burn citrus or um, in your infuser you have uh, maybe a certain smell of lavender. But a lot of people um, have a signature smell that they like to have in their home. Uh, back in the days, if I could say, we had incense. Do you remember incense? And you'd have a certain uh, incense wand that you would burn that was the smell that you particularly liked. Well, today we kind of do that with the infuser, don't we? With the, um, is that what it's called, infuser? Oh, unmute if you know what it's called. I'm trying to think of what it's called. The diffuser, right? Diff diffuser, yeah. Diffuser. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and candles, of course, uh, also have a beautiful smell. And so kind of consider that. Sometimes when I come back from vacation is when I notice it the most. When I come home and I'm all excited, I'm either excited about that smell that it is, or I'm not so excited and I need to do something about it because it smells like it's been, the house has been held up, you know, closed up for a week or two. But um, think about that as you are, um, trying to establish more cozy, maybe that's an area that you would like to uh, research a little bit more and see, is a diffuser a good way to go? Is it a candle? Do I like citrus? Do I like musk? Do I like um, frankincense? You know, I mean, you kind of have to try things out and find what your signature scents, scent might be. And then Ava, I will tell you, um, it's really important that houses, when you are going to look at them on the market, that they don't overly smell. So you don't wanna have it where you feel like you're hiding something. At the same time, you want things to smell fresh and clean. And so uh, realtors are always looking for a clean smelling candle or a clean smelling something to uh, help out the, the um, unusual smells that people naturally have in a home. And personalizing your walls, that's a great way to be personal um, by putting your artwork, your own personal artwork, uh, an artist that you love. Um, this is a, a, um, a grouping of different kinds of artwork, you know, that have been collected. Some of this artwork could come from children because you see, you know, see the different kinds of artwork. Uh, it's just a nice way to display your personality and you can do it on a wall. Something like this people find really daunting, but 
a couple weeks ago, I was working on someone's home and I just was tired. It was the end of the day. We had worked all day on this house and I had to put up a, a photo gallery of their family. And really it didn't take as long as I thought it would because I did it a little bit more by sight and then fixed ones that were just a little off. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and you have a big picture wall you wanna do, give me a call, we'll talk about it. Um, I can kind of coach you through how you might be able to hang a wall like that in a shorter period of time. So, but it's a great way to personalize. And notice kind of your eye, you might be noticing this in these pictures. When the furniture is really bright and you see a lot of color on the furniture, the walls tend to be more subtle and not have a lot of color because you almost can't do both. You know, you can't, you can't have so much color that it's overwhelming. So changing things up at home is important and it can be this simple. Um, these are three, this is the same room, three different ways. Um, this person likes to change things up. Uh, she, this, she's a blogger, I can give you her name. Um, it's right there in fact. Um, she changes things up because she just likes to, you know, have something new to blog about. And notice that even though it's the same artwork on the walls, the same uh, salvage piece over the bed, the same bed, right? Um, and also the same dust ruffle. Everything else she's been able to change up and, and do different things. And probably, Lori, you're the person that I know that does this the most. She changes up her bedrooms. Why don't you tell everybody where you store the things or how you store the things or you know how that works when you do make all these changes uh, you know seasonally to your bedrooms well i'm fortunate enough to have a loft above our garage that is jam-packed but with all my duvets and stuff i love those zippered uh container or the zippered uh plastic things that they come in i save mm -hmm. them whenever i get a chance and i store them uh in that i take a picture of every bed set so that i remember how and what and, and then i know i can mix them up like that so yeah they're stored up in the loft and and I'm, I've got a lofty amount of stuff in there. <laughs> it's beautiful, very, very well done. So um, this is uh, the last slide um, from the presentation. Does anybody have anything to add? Or, you know, why don't you just tell me, we have just a few, few, few minutes. What, just really quick, in a few words, what you want to do next at home that we can all kind of be thinking about for you, you know, like, uh, what what kind of change do you want to make at home next as you're moving into the summer? Oops. Um, I was trying to unmute you. Uh, I should say, Christine, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, our next major project is going to be outdoors. We need to do some landscaping. Nice. Oh, and then I had a question. Yes, yes. slide when you were talking about the sitting arrangements and it was the two kind of modern wing backs in front of that beautiful yep. picture window yep. was that one of your designs no that was from pinterest i wish oh. i could take credit it's one of my favorite rooms i it moved it beautiful. yeah i use it as an example for clients a lot i would love to have done it i would i would do it again if i could um let's see sharon when i i just did the orange shears on my window and right. it just brightens it and I have a beautiful view. I, I have a granny flat on my daughter's property and I look over the pool and the yard and the vegetables and I'm kind of in a really neat place. That's awesome. Sandra, do you have anything? Uh, I know what you're gonna be doing. <laughs> yes, we're redoing a bathroom. Yep. So that's it's fun to do that. It's a small bathroom, but it's still redoing everything in there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Ava, is there anything you're going to be working on next? How about Margaret? Adding that dark purple to the yeah. basic Joanna Gaines style, I guess, that's popular now. Awesome. Lori, what do you got? What do you have on your list? I don't really have anything right now for the summer. We just finished our back deck, so we're just going to spend some time now enjoying it. And it is beautiful. I have seen that deck. It is beautiful. You did a great job. 
Thank you. Who did I miss? You missed me. Oh, Eva. <laughs> yes. Come tell yes. me. What are you going to be working on? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I would like to work on my living room, but I need ideas. Good. And so um, I have to make sure I'm always around to listen to your all your ideas and incorporate them. <laughs> yes. Well, you just, you just teed me up for the next slide. Um, I'm working, I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek. Uh, I am working on um, a class with um, a group called Teachables. Have you been to the Teachable site to learn new things? No. I'm what? working on it. Okay. And I'm, I'm what site is that again? Teachable. Teachable. It's, okay. And uh, it's, it's the class is on what design style are you? And so I've been working on, uh, there's 15 design styles. And I think when I go into someone's home and we're getting started and they're kind of all over the place with what their style is, I almost have to get them into one lane because otherwise they come home with a clear plastic modern ghost chair and then they like this uh, cow, um, very country French painting. And then they start going for industrial shelving from Ikea. And then all of a sudden they're getting a carpet that's geometric and modern. And I can help narrow their focus if we can just figure out their design style. And so that's a class that I'm working on and I just wanted to give you a sneak uh, kind of introduction to it. And I'm hoping by the end of summer I will be launching it. So if I say it, it's gonna happen, right? Yeah, and I, I think that will be for me because I don't know what my style is. <laughs> Very good. I'd love for you to take it. And uh, so I'll have, I just wanted to mention, I'll have a quiz for everyone when they get started in the class so that they can start to narrow down their style um, on the first day. So it'll be fun. So for the Home Decorators Club, um, I would like to do another webinar um, next month, uh, July 7th. I have uh, put it on my calendar and we're going to talk about the top 10 blogs that every interior design fan should follow. And we did this talk, I did this talk about three or four years ago, but I have new designers. I have new people that you're going to want to follow that are exciting and fun and have some great ideas uh, of which today you saw a few of their designs. I got them off of their blog. And so I've already sneak peeked you a little bit of it. And then uh, a lot of people are asking me about how we're going to get social again. And I want it to be comfortable for you uh, and comfortable for me too. And so we're looking at Tuesday the 28th. Um, to go to Panera there in Rockland, um, the Panera Bread Store at 11. We're going to go a little bit early and we'll sit outside under the umbrellas. And we, you can bring your lunch or you can eat your lunch from Panera or just have a cup of tea with us. Uh, we'll try to do some social spacing. If you want to wear a mask, it's totally up to you. But um, I can tell I'm getting a lot of messaging that people want to get together and want to talk and, and catch up. So uh, that's what we'll do then. And if you're interested in being on my newsletter or uh, I do a monthly newsletter that goes out to everybody, or if you want to learn a little bit more about your design style and be the first to hear about the class when it launches, uh, please be sure that I get your email address so that I can uh, connect with you. So, and it looks like we're just one minute to our top of the hour. And I'm just so grateful that you came and showed up today. This has been so much fun to do. And um, it's been a really great club. We're a five-year-old club, so we've been around a while. And I appreciate um, just being able to share something I love with people that love it too. So thank you. Any final uh, words you'd like to share or something you'd like to talk about? Is velvet popular right now? Uh, velvet would be in the fall. And so usually you see velvet pillows on the sofa, you know, starting in September. And then we usually pick them up and, and put different sofa pillows out, usually coming in, uh, the, you know, spring when it gets spring. If you buy a velvet sofa, though, it can be around year round. I mean, that's a year round thing. Right. Velvet's very popular. So is that where you um, combine the shabby chic velvet and, and linen or? Hmm? wood like the the raw wood now or the bleached wood uh-huh i've okay. seen yeah velvet is fairly neutral anymore okay um, on the this you saw a turquoise velvet sofa earlier yes i love presentation mm -hmm. love in great. there's a really good company that does a lot of velvet sofas called jaybird you might look them up on the internet 
I was looking at fainting benches or whatever you call them anymore. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were really pretty. pretty and they were, a lot of them are in velvet. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Janice, any closing thoughts? You know, I just wanted to let you know that there was a question on chat that said, is this presentation going to be available, rather the recording or your slide deck? Um, sure, as soon as I figure that out. <laughs> Thank you. So, any, anyone else? Janice, did you have anything? I just kind of called on you. Um, I just was wondering, I'm gonna, I was trying to do my kitchen cabinets because they're really old. They were done in the 50s. And I was wondering if you had any ideas about that. Um, I think painting them is always good to paint, definitely upstates any kitchen, any cabinets. I mean, always makes it look amazing. You wanna get a, a painter that really knows cabinets. Okay. And usually you want them frayed, not rolled. But I mean, I've seen them both ways. Mm -hmm. So, but just get a painter that is comfortable doing cabinets because you don't want streaks and lines. You know, so refacing. Have you done mm -hmm. any? Mm -hmm. That's that's usually if the cabinet doors are warped or the style is not the style that you want, or there's a damage to the doors. They're not closing properly. Yeah, that would be my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you might want to reface. You reface, okay. and then you get new doors, and yeah. it looks amazing. They usually do a very good job, and you'll want to paint the inside of the cabinets not just the outside. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Lori, anything new? Any closing remarks? No, but thank you very much. This was, this was cool. Oh, I'm good. Ribbons. Well, I hope I can count on you to come back next month. All righty. And I want to say thanks to Susan, too, for helping me with the technology part today, because I was nervous about it. <laughs> you did great. You. That was fun. Great. Well, thank you. I hope you all have a good rest of the day, and I'll see you on July 7th for our next uh, Zoom call. All righty. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.